This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. All right, folks, who's ready to lose their voice with me? BYU Sports Nation is live. <laughs> Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. How you doing, man? I'm, you know, I'm good. I'm playing hurt. Not really. I'm fine. The vocal cords, not so much, but I'm glad to be back. Friday, yeah. September 24th. You sound normal. I don't know what the difference is, honestly. What happened? Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Everything's fine, right? <laughs> I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Max Hall's number one overall fan, Jerem Jordan. We, we should have had Jeff Judkins come in and do the show and then see if the, anyone hey, noticed the difference. Hey, Spencer. Uh, we got a letter in the mail. I don't. I can't remember the name. What's the name? Oh, uh, Sloop Josh B on Twitter. What's up, Sloop? It says, Dear BYU Sports Nation, from Hall to Hall. His last name must be Hall. The circle is complete. The curse is broken. Yes. Please consider displaying this on set. To his due. It's a Max Hall signed card. Yeah. Autographed in the Arizona Cardinals uniform. Yeah. I have gone to Beckett, and this is worth nine do- No, I have no idea. We're going to put it on set here. Yeah. Thank you. Add it to the John Beck and Zach Wilson cards at the front of the desk. Yeah. Right here. All right. That one's autographed, though. We need to get the other two autographed. I don't know. Do we know that? Hey, by the way, now, now think about this. Yeah. Did Utah start a curse with Tyler Huntley? They so poopoo? Yes. Mm. Is that a new curse that's going to work against Utah? I, I see what you're doing there. What worked against Utah is turning the ball over twice. Right. What worked against Utah is, wait, listen, they can't even blame a current guy. Charlie Brewer left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. The man, outie. the man did a lot for the rivalry's sake. No one did more for the rivalry's sake save Lavelle Edwards. Except for Charlie Brown. Oh I think goodness. John Taylor said that. Did he say oh, that? my goodness. Hey. Some thanks, guy named John Taylor. Thanks, Sloop Josh B. for the card. In fact, I think Max Hall would be a fan of today's show lineup. Jim. Oh, yeah, dude. Including this discussion. Was the loss at USF in 2019 a necessary setback Oh wow! for BYU to turn things around? Okay. BYU's a 23-point favorite this time around. Certainly mm-hmm. different. What would qualify as a satisfactory margin of victory for you? And then Kerry Summerhays Roberts knows all about winning, Jerem. The former Golf All-American and current BYU women's coach joins us to preview her Hall of Fame night. Plus, which BYU rival are you rooting for in tomorrow's showdown? Boise State or Utah State? And yes, you have to pick one. Bring on today's headlines. Game day eve is number 15. BYU hosts South Florida tomorrow night. The Bulls beat the Cougars 2019, 27-23 in a game that both Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney played in. Cougar pregame live begins on BYU Radio at 8 Eastern. BYU TV's countdown to kickoff at 9 Eastern. BYU alumnus Brady Christensen and the Carolina Panthers are 3-0 for the first time in six years. After a 24-9 win over the Houston Texans, several other Cougs in the NFL busy this weekend, including Tyson Williams and the Baltimore Ravens facing Jamal Williams and the Detroit Lions. A couple of Williams running backs. Zach Wilson and the New York Jets are in Denver to take on the Broncos. Michael Davis and the Chargers face Dirty Dan and the Zane Train and the Kansas City Chiefs. Number 11, women's volleyball got it done last night in the West Coast Conference Open. Reiner, Ifo, high to Larinette. Yes! And BYU starts West Coast Conference playoff with a sweep. Of Pacific. Cougars won by 33 domination. Kenzie Kerber led the Cougars with nine kills. Freshman Elise Stoll had eight off the bench. BYU hosts Santa Maria and former Cougar player and assistant coach turned Gales coach Rob Browning tomorrow, 3 Eastern, early one, on the BYU, on BYU TV and the app. Jerem Jordan on the call with Amy Gant. Can't wait for BYU to be 2-0 in WCC play. That's the expectation? I'm calling my shot. Yeah. Third like the shot. I know, right? <laughs> Super bold. Third-ranked BYU men's cross-country in Minnesota for the 35th annual Roy Griak Invitational. Connor Mance, all he does is win. First place with a time of 23 minutes, 53 seconds, and 9 hundredths, followed by Casey Klinger in fourth. BYU in first place overall. Just won by one point, 34-35 to over Iowa State, so just got it done. Men's golf tees off at the William H. Tucker Invitational in Albuquerque. 
Cougars were picked to finish second in the preseason West Coast Conference Coaches Bowl. I'm just always debating whether I mentioned something about Breaking Bad or not. When I Do it. Albuquerque. Do it. I'm waiting for Better Call Saul. What is it, season six, seven? Should be. How do I watch season five, by the way? I can only find four seasons on Netflix. What? How do I find season five? Someone tweet it, Spencer, and help Please me. help me. Yeah. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. A necessary setback. BYU football, since losing at USF, Jerem, back in 2019, get this, have gone, and that leads us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. They've gone 19 and 3 since that really head scratching tough loss in Tampa in 2019. BYU dropped to 2 and 4. It was kind of the bottom of the barrel. And then Aaron Roderick took over play calling duties primarily. BYU beat Boise State, undefeated ranked team in Provo. It wasn't even hard. BYU used the third string quarterback. They won five straight after that USF loss, and 19 of the last 22. They've won 14 of the last 15. Jerem, was the first USF game a necessary evil and turning point for BYU and Kalani Satake mm. to turn things around? Quite the question there, voiceless Spencer. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I, yeah, I wonder... I wonder if it was because I, I kind of hate the idea of you have to have a bad thing to have a good thing. That's not always the case, right? Um, but in this case, maybe it was. Maybe BYU needed to be two and four to finally um, let Aaron Roderick. Um, what is it? The other guys? I'm a peacock. I got to fly. Yes. That was Aaron yes. Roderick where he he was not allowed to fly. He was caged up in Salt Lake at Utah, just pushed around, demoted. Blah blah. You know what he's done when he's been the O.C.? Lead BYU to a 19-3 record. Yeah, how about like, there that? Like, there are a lot of elements to go into that. I'm not saying it's just Aaron Roderick, but I'm saying oh, – it's like Kalani's pointing at himself. I like that uh, in the graphic. Um, I, Aaron Roderick has, has helped this offense flourish. He produced a number two pick in the draft. He produced Zach Wilson. Jaron Hall is recognized nationally now. Baylor Romney became a thing. Um, hey, the development of the quarterbacks has been tremendous. The offensive play calling has been tremendous. Maybe it was because the way that BYU has played since that moment, Spencer, is incredible. Like you said, 19 and 3, 14 and 1 in the last 15. That's the best record uh, since the start of last year f- for anybody save Alabama. Are you kidding me? Whoa. That company is pretty good to be in. So maybe it was. Maybe that was the turning point because at 2 and 4, coming back home, hosting number 14 Boise State. Yes. There's a ch- good chance BYU goes 2 and 5. There's a chance that maybe Kalani Sataki is not renewed if BYU doesn't go on a little bit of a run. That Boise State game was one of the most influential games, I dare say, in BYU history because of what it meant for the program to keep Kalani, to put Aaron in that spot, to produce a Zach Wilson, right? Zach did a lot for himself as well. Let's not, I'm not acting like it's just Aaron Roderick or just one individual, but I, I think so. Maybe it was a necessary evil. BYU had a losing record under Kalani Satake after that USF loss. 22 and 23, one game below 500. Do you do you renew that guy if you're you know what I mean? But there's then some the, real pressure there, right? Real pressure. So Kalani switches things up. Aaron Roderick starts calling the plays. They switch the roster around a little bit by necessity at the quarterback position, and in comes high and mighty Boise State looking at BYU, thinking, man, those guys just lost to a really bad USF team. We can kind of cakewalk our way through this. They were absolutely overlooking BYU. That brings up a thought, okay? BYU now is the ranked, undefeated, high-flying team in this. They have Boise State in two weeks. Boise State is 1-2 and two right now. They play at Utah State on Saturday. Are the Broncos thinking, hmm, payback in a most almost poetic way if they have a losing record coming to Provo against potentially undefeated and high-flying BYU? That's an interesting thought. Yes, because they already have two losses where they should have won. At UCF, they were up, what, 17 in that game? Yes, 24-7. Okay, and then they missed a 36-yarder that was blocked late against Oklahoma State at home last week. So, Boise State's thinking we should be 3-0. and What the heck? They're 1-2. and Yeah, it's not in conference, so, um, you know, if Boise State wins their conference, uh, that's kind of goal number one, right? But And you already have two losses, so if you're Boise State, yes, you want to beat BYU, especially after last year. Listen, that was a beatdown, dude. That was ugly. Like, that was BYU rated and, R for and violence. Embarrassed 
Boise on the blue. Yeah. You know? Oh, Boise State scored two late touchdowns. Whatever. They would have been different with Hank Bachmeyer. <laughs> Stop it. We still have two weeks. Let's not assume that Come Hank's on. actually playing in the BYU game. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm with you. I look at that game in October of 2019, and I remember specifically talking with Lopini Katoa after that game. And he had a pretty good game. Didn't get the ball in some clutch situations when he wanted to at the end of the game. And uh, Lopini said, yeah, we're just – we're just really frustrated because we feel like we're way better than this. Yeah, they just lost to Toledo and USF. Yeah, like we – and he said – They'd beaten USC and Tennessee. He said, I can't speak for everyone, but we just feel like we're largely underperforming and that, that we can't lose games like this. Yeah. So uh, that conversation, I thought, huh, well, now they got Boise State. Is BYU going to drop to 2-5? and five? That was, Oh, my goodness. We all went into that game thinking, yeah, BYU's probably going to lose this. Are they gonna you're get starting to a- Baylor Romney. We knew in that post game, remember? Yes. Kalen Stocky told yes. you. Jaron, um, you know, or, or Zach, Zach was out against Toledo, and then after that, yeah. Jaron's probably not going to play. It, yep. was, it was Baylor Sorry, Romney. I'm referencing the Toledo game, actually. Right. He told you Zach's out. But Baylor played at the end of the USF game. Yes. Jaron Hall has a concussion. It's like, he's not going to be ready. Yes. We knew Baylor Romney he's was going to be the guy. Baylor Romney could be on the revenge tour here. Yes. Um, if he gets some PT, we'll see, right, of, Utah, of South Florida and Utah State. Um, Utah State, he he played really well. No revenge required, but just like do it again. And then South Florida, trust me, Jaron Hall wants to play a great yes. game Saturday yes. against this team to avenge 2019, man. Sure. There are a few things at play there when you think about Jaron mentally. Uh, he has started five games and only finished two. That's gnarly. There's a reason he came out in the press conference. Because if I'm Jaron, Jaron I'm thinking – uh, I I don't. I'm be... okay with you mixing my name, by the way. Okay, okay. That, I'm flattered. Okay, it's one letter. <laughs> it's one letter. It happened Wednesday too. I, I like blame this. it on COVID long haul effects. Yeah. Uh, Jaron naturally doesn't want to be the guy that's always injured, so he came out and did the press conference. It's actually, at Arizona two letters. State another thing, but... and said, "No, I'm fine. I'll be ready." Yep. You don't think he wants to finish what he couldn't finish against USF in 2019? Like Kylo Ren, he wants to finish what yes. he started. Bring he it full circle, beat USF. So, yeah, if I'm Jaron, even if I'm a little bit banged up, yeah. I absolutely want to play, but I do expect Baylor Romney to see some time in this game as well. Due to blowout, question mark, which brings us to topic two. Would 17-plus be enough of a win against South Florida? The line is 23-and-a-half out of Vegas. Yes, 17-plus is enough. In Thank fact, you for went, joining me. I went on record a couple of uh, a week ago, remember I said, oh, 17 plus. We have a recorder? Hey, 17 plus. Do we have plus. A, like a stenographer or whatever? What is it called? A stenographer? The, who's the person who types? Oh, gotcha. Is that who that is? Okay. On record. Yeah. yeah. Type Do it we down. have one? Well, we have a is video ca- enough? We have a close caption. We have a close caption. There you go. It's close enough, right? Should we say something super weird that they have to just type right now? Uh, don't make their life. A Google than they already are. Points Saturday. I expect a <laughs> gaggle of points. <laughs> Gaggle's easy to spell. <laughs> 17 plus is plenty, Jerem. Like, yeah. And we've seen a rash of like close games in college football this year with high ranked teams. Oklahoma has struggled with Tulane and mm-hmm. Nebraska when they were 20 plus point favorites. Clemson barely beats Georgia Tech when they're a four touchdown Six. favorite. You just got to win. You got to keep winning. At BYU, honestly, if they win by three or seven, heaven forbid it's that close, they just got to keep winning. And maintain that ranking, but 17 plus would absolutely be enough in this. Yeah, one wouldn't be enough. Uh, it would be weird. Seven wouldn't be enough. That, I th- 17. Here's the reason I brought up 17 in the first place. It's three scores. If you win by three scores, that was domination. Two sure. scores, you're like, we threw a hail mary on side. We gotta, we gotta play right. Um, 17 would be enough. I do hope BYU covers in this because I think that's where BYU's at. But BYU's banged up a little bit, right? Tyler Algiers played three power five games where he's yeah. had a ton of carries. Um, and then Jaron Hall obviously comes out of the game last week. Keenan uh, Peely is out. Will we see Keenan Ellis? Question mark tomorrow. That'd be great. Hope so. Um, that'd be awesome. Yes. I, I wonder if it's going to be an 11 point margin. Let me tell you why. Because the last three have been eight, nine, ten. Just make him one more. Just, just 11, and then you just keep going. It just keeps going up. That's not actually going to happen. Well, here's but the thing. 17 plus would be acceptable. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. USF is a better team than Arizona. Think about that. USF is a better team than Arizona. That's a that's an interesting thought. Because USF is uh, – continue, actually. Let's okay. Hear, let's Arizona hear. just lost to an FCS opponent at home. Northern Arizona. USF beat FCS opponent yes. Florida A&M. Yes. 38-17. Um, like, if they played head-to-head, yeah. I would expect USF to win by, like, a field goal. Mm. 
Okay. Mm. USF, I think, is a better team than Arizona. BYU Arizona's won. not really a power five team. Kind of a power five. They won the game in Vegas against Arizona by eight. So, yeah, like, don't be surprised to see it be a 10 point victory, 14 point victory. 17 plus would be plenty against yes. USF. If it's a two score game, honestly, I'm a little disappointed because BYU is ranked 15th, 3 0. At home. Beat two and a half. Power five teams. I'm gonna keep making that joke the whole season. I yes, and and BYU's at home. Yes, if it was neutral side or Tampa. Here's the other reason: Timmy McLean is a freshman quarterback making his first road start. Good two, luck. Two time zones, freshman quarterback. Good BYU luck. should win the game by 17 points. Sure. Coming up, you'll hear from Joey Johnston, the sideline reporter on the radio. He likes Timmy McLean a lot. Likes the upside. Likes the comparison to Quentin Flowers, who is a tremendous quarterback on two 10-plus win teams in 16 and 17 for USF. But uh, it's two time zones, freshman quarterback, late start. So much to this ask. This screams BYU big win. It just does. This game's not in Florida, where BYU's winless, Jerem. It's in Provo. One win. Oh, that's right. They did Boca Raton. The Boca Raton against the UCF too. That is, tr- that so is it correct. Was, yes, the first. The, after that game, I was like, oh, the monkey's off the back of the fl- team in Karen, Florida. Th- that started the streak of exercising demons all season long. We're all about okay? that. So BYU got ranked last season. They finished ranked for the first time in 12 years or 11 years. They won in Florida, and it carried over to this season. The Utah they streak. ended the Utah streak. Multiple power fives. Yes. 3-0 and for the back-to-back years, first time since 51-52. They're about to do, never, never happened. happened. They're about to do something they've never done. That's incredible. You think of all the things Lavelle Edwards did. Never, never 4-0 and no. back-to-back? No. Seasons? That's incredible. And then think about this. BYU has Utah State in Week 5 as an undefeated ranked team most likely. 2014. They're going to exercise some demons against Utah State as well in that scenario. Let's go. Daryl, what was his name, the quarterback for Utah State? I don't even want to give him Daryl. Yeah. Just some guy named Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Our question of the day. What is a satisfactory margin of victory over USF, in your opinion? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Daryl Garrettson. Daryl Garrettson. Daryl Garrettson. Transferred to Oregon State, too. Yep. At Roberts underscore MN on Twitter. As tempting as it is to channel my inner Cobra Kai, no mercy. 24 to 28 points would bring inner peace to the Minnesota mansion. <laughs> okay. You have a mansion? All right. That's cool. All right. Robert's on his gram at the Minnesota mansion. The Bob's Minnesota. Coming up, an impressive feat by new BYU hoopster. And as Jared mentioned, get to know the Bulls a little bit better with USF sideline reporter Joey Johnston. What's he expecting from a freshman quarterback making his first road start? This is BYU Sports Nation. such a difference in our lives I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are and so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter we thought okay that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in we want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region we want people who leave BYU to still stay connected down to kick off. Touchdown! Isaac Rex laying out for the score. I'm, I'm gonna mark that one down. That's big enough. Early spicy mark it down. Mark you know? it down. Yeah.
BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Countdown to kickoff gets you ready for number 15 BYU hosting South Florida. Little revenge game of Jaron Hall. Let's go. Dave Blaine, David, Spencer gets ready for the game. Watch warm-ups. Only place to do that, 9 Eastern, tomorrow on BYU TV and the app. I've been yelling at Jerem all morning. I know. Like, I lost simmer, my voice. Simmer down, man. I'm sorry. I, apo- I need to apologize. You keep calling me form. Jaren. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you wouldn't freak out about it. <laughs> Jaren and I need a podcast. Yes. Yeah, Jaren and Jerem. and Jaren. Yeah. yeah. Who would go first, though? Would it be you or him? I host. He's the co-host. Okay, so you're, it's Jerem and Jaren. Oh, you're saying first listed? Yeah, who no, he goes first, first because he's a bigger name. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The important things that we're discussing. Yes. Are, st- or are we back? Yeah, we are back. In fact, we are live in Studio B. Oh, yeah. So with we- your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play, I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem, not Jaren, Jordan. Okay, you called me 2J back in the iPro yeah, days, yes, right? Yes. Our next Our next guest is a guy who's 2J he's, as well. He's a 2J. Joey Johnston, South Florida radio sideline reporter i talked to him earlier today mainly just to uh you know save spencer's voice here thank you to get to know the south florida bulls a little bit better here's that conversation all right joey welcome to BYU sports nation great to have you man thank you thanks for having me appreciate it okay 2019 BYU goes down to tampa loses that game uh we're gonna see some familiar characters in that play jaron hall maybe baylor romney we'll see uh it's been two years. What, if anything, uh, do you take away from that game that could have anything to do with this game this year? Um, I think mostly it's just the USF's confidence knowing that they have beaten BYU with with maybe some of the, the same players in, in the same places. So maybe they can draw on that. But the, the truth is a lot has changed for USF. Certainly a new coach, a lot of, a lot of new players. So... Um, you know, it's more of a more of a distant memory than something specific, but maybe just the ability to know you can compete and beat a team like BYU can provide some confidence. And it's interesting. We were just talking uh, about the show uh, on the show that since that loss, BYU is nineteen and three. They really turned a corner since then. So that's been the sort of uh, benchmark interesting game in BYU recent history. Um, I do want to mention that uh, Coach Jeff Scott was asked about snow on the mountains earlier this week by a media member. There's no snow quite yet, so you don't have to bring a long jacket. You didn't, I hope you didn't pack one. I did pack a long sleeve uh, <laughs> thing because, uh, you know, if it's in the 60s or, or 50s, uh, me being a Florida guy, will need a little something on my arms. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to the invigorating air because we've had a stifling, steamy, rainy summer like we always do. So this will be a literal breath of fresh air to get out and, and be in Utah for sure. Yeah, it'll be, and it'll be great to have the program this far west. I know it's rare to come this far, so it'll be, uh, it'll be entertaining. Okay, when you talk about the lateness of the game, too, this is a 10-20 Eastern kick. Trust me, it's late for even BYU in the Mountain Time Zone. What impact, if any, physically could that have on the South Florida players? Well, you know, obviously you've got to prepare for it, and they have prepared for it. The, the, the players are in place. They left yesterday, uh, so they are, uh, they are already in Provo and um, trying to get their body clocks arranged properly. And, uh, you know, not only that, uh, when do you eat, when do you practice, when do you rest, and by, hopefully by game time they'll have all that sorted out. So they are making efforts to make sure that they can adjust to, to the late time. I think for, for fans uh, back home in the East, uh, uh, time zone. It's going to be definitely interesting. Game tipping off uh, at 10:20 uh, at night. Uh, they're not accustomed to that. It's the latest starting uh, USF game on East Coast time in, in the history of the program. So it's definitely a late night with USF kind of thing, where maybe the college kids will get together and wear their pajamas and watch the game or something like that. But uh, definitely unusual. But uh, they do have they do have and have had time to adjust to it. So, but you know, just adjusting to it and actually feeling good about it and having your body right, game time are two different things. So hopefully they'll they'll take the necessary precautions. Yeah, college kids up late at night. Uh, that happens. Uh, it's just different when you're having to tackle someone, right? I guess. Let's talk about Timmy <laughs> McLean, the quarterback. So got his first start. He's a freshman. Uh, you know, did well uh, against Florida A&M last week. What do you expect from him? Because I know in the game notes they said, hey, you know who else uh, first started against uh, Florida A&M? Quentin Flowers, who was amazing a couple years ago. Yes, and, and, uh, and they both wear number nine. 
Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, you know, Quentin Flowers, uh, people called him Q. That's easy to figure out, Quentin. Uh, guess what they call Timmy McLean? His nickname is also Q. Mm. You might think, why is a guy, why is a guy named Timmy McLean nicknamed Q? Well, his middle name is Jaquiel with a Q, and turns out back in the day when he was playing youth football, I guess they referred to him as uh, Jaquiel, and uh, some people couldn't pronounce it, and the coaches just said, hey, "We're just going to call you Q," and it stuck. <laughs> and you know you, you you hear people say hey Q and, and you think why are they calling Timmy McLean Q but that is that is literally his nickname so a lot of parallels with Quentin Flowers and not exactly the same type of player but uh, some similarities I mean he he definitely is elusive can move with his feet uh, probably has a better arm than Quentin Flowers does he's all Timmy is also a left hander uh, he will he will look a lot like a like a Michael Vick physically in terms of the, 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 the mobility and the setup and the way he delivers the ball uh, from the left hand, uh, it will remind you of that. Uh, and his ability to uh, to elude tacklers and make plays and keep his head about him is, is really exceptional for a true freshman. Uh, you know, again, it's very early in, in his career, but he certainly has the makings of a guy that has the potential to really, really be very, very good. And another positive thing about him is he has a great mind and a great attitude toward the whole thing. He's very unflustered. He's not going to be a jumpy freshman. He, he, he is wise beyond his years. His father refers to him as an old soul. And he is the, he's one of those kids that growing up has studied quarterbacks. He reads about them. He watches films on them. And one of his favorite quarterbacks is Bart Starr which seems wow. to make no sense because Bart Starr retired from the NFL three decades before Tommy McClain was born. <laughs> but he's one of those guys that studies history, studies quarterbacks, uh, and is a, is a film room, meeting room, junkie kind of kid that takes great notes. So, you know, being, being a good quarterback matters to him and preparing to be a good quarterback matters to him. So those are all very positive signs for a guy that's kind of just starting out. Bart Starr, consider me impressed. That's going deep into the pockets of uh, NFL history in the 60s there. I like that a lot. Okay, I love a good nickname. So big play Weaver, Xavier Weaver, uh, top 10 in the country at 15 yards per punt return. A punt return is a rare thing nowadays. And then BYU has a punter who put up an 83-yarder last week in Ryan Rico. So that matchup could be a ton of fun. <laughs> it could. And, and Xavier Weaver also is, is, is doing great things at wide receiver. Uh, they probably need to figure out more ways to get him the ball because he's averaging a, a high uh, yardage total in a, in a very small sample size. But I think we're going to look, you know, to see him targeted more and more. The, the the crazy thing about the punt return is it's not something he really has done much or at all. Uh, literally a couple of weeks ago before the first game, uh, whoever they had back there getting punts, they weren't happy with him. Uh, and, the coach just kind of said, hey, who, who can return punts? And Xavier raised his hand. And <laughs> that's literally how this started. And he went back there, and first of all, they felt secure in his ability to catch the ball, which is always the first thing. And uh, he, he has shown the ability to make things happen. So he has <laughs> found a name for himself or found a home for himself as a punt returner when, when he hadn't really done it at all. So this is, uh, this is happening right before our eyes in real time. Well, it's a good thing Donovan Jennings, the left tackle, didn't raise his hand in that moment, I guess, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't, I don't think you would have quite I, the same average. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that, Donovan, but uh, thank you for raising your hand. The third down emphasis is fun. Uh, apparently on third down, the offense yells money, and then on defense, they yell cash. Uh, obviously an important down, but it's kind of a new tradition, I guess, with this group. Yeah, yeah. There's, you know, And, and I, I wouldn't say by any means they've been really efficient. Uh, on either side of the ball on third downs yet, but they are they know that's important and they're trying to get better at it. Uh, that that's one of the many things that they need to get better at to turn the corner as a program. Um, you know, the, the rebuilding has has uh, has has been underway for a couple of years. The last year and a confusing year for everybody with COVID. The Bulls were one and eight, uh, won their first game at the Citadel and lost eight straight. So um, and this year off to a one and two start with the win over Florida and M. So they are looking for their first FBS uh, win since 2019. Uh, they have certainly gotten more talent in the program. And uh, I think they will find their way back. It's just going to take some time. 
and uh, it's going to take some baby steps. And uh, they are certainly not shy about playing good competition. They opened at NC State. They're coming to BYU this week, and they play Florida. And this is something they're going to do a lot in the next few years. They're going to play high-caliber competition out of conference. In fact, BYU will open the season next year in Tampa, coming back down to Raymond James Stadium. So um, when, 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 when the team gets back on it, finds its sea legs and gets uh, back in winning ways, uh, they figure to have the type of non-conference schedule that could maybe you know, open some doors for them. But in the meantime, the learning process can be painful and, and painstaking. So that, that's kind of where they are now. They're trying to get better at a lot of things and, and baby steps. Maybe, it'll, maybe they'll take a giant leap on, on these weeks. Uh, we'll see. But, but it's a building progress, a building process that we're seeing uh, each week. Hey, baby steps, Bill Murray. I like that a lot. Uh, ne- <laughs> next yeah, year, move. BYU uh, will play its final season as an independent and then be a member of the Big 12 the next year. UCF as well, the war on I-4, the rivalry with UCF. What's the reaction there as the, uh, the Knights are headed to the Big 12 there? Well, it's, uh, it's a lot of chatter about that among fan bases, as you might imagine, because uh, the shoe was on the other foot years ago when USF uh, in uh, its eighth season as a program was uh was invited to join the big east which at the time was a what they called a bcs conference that had access to the major bowl games and ucf was not invited uh to that level so uh now it, uh, it's changed ucf is getting a seat at the at what you maybe call the grown-ups table um and usf is not at the moment but i think in a lot of ways it's going to spur usf into action there is uh grounds has been broken on a new indoor facility at usf which the football program is desperately needed and now there is finally talk of building an on-campus stadium which they've never had they play at raymond james stadium which is the home of the buccaneers the home of the last super bowl a very very fine state-of-the-art world-class stadium the only problem is it's not on usf's campus so uh, the hope is that if they build an on-campus stadium it will uh, uh, help grow the program in a lot of ways and, and certainly would be a, a really key factor in and perhaps uh, one day maybe being invited to a place like the big 12 or or, or so forth usf certainly has that potential being in in tampa in florida where where, where football is king where there are a lot of uh, a lot of television eyeballs, uh, so uh, USF just needs to get back on, on a winning uh, track and, and build some things. I think maybe they have a chance to, uh, to up their ante in, in the conference realignment uh, situation. Well, sounds great. We are looking forward to the matchup tomorrow, tomorrow night. Safe travels, and we appreciate the time, Joey. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, and look forward to seeing you guys. Joey Johnson, USF radio sideline reporter. Thanks for saving my voice on that. And that was a fantastic interview. A lot of insight. It's about reps. Um, we don't need you to practice. We need to get through the E block. Okay. Through the fourth quarter. Okay. So it's all good, man. Yeah, good insight there in USF. Let's go. Okay, coming up, Hall of Famer Kerry Roberts joins the program. And which Williams, Jamal or Tyson, will have the more productive weekend mm. in the NFL? This is BYU Sports Nation. We're going head to head. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. 
Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Stories have a way of framing some of the important conversations that we're already having and giving us the language that we sometimes have a hard time finding. The Appleseed is a show filled with stories for you and your family. Tall tales, fairy tales, folk tales, personal and family tales, all kinds of tales from all kinds of tellers. And we always hope that the stories that we bring you on the show spark memories for you that you can share with the people that you love. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. You ready for hoop season? BYU men's basketball season preview live from the opening day of practice as Tyler Haas and I introduce you to the newcomers, the turning starters, and storylines you need to know. Plus, you join mic'd up coaches and a loaded guest lineup Tuesday night, 9 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. Very much looking forward to that. He is Jeremiah and Spencer. This is a Friday edition of BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show, potentially lose your voice, get animated about it. <laughs> You can follow our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. It just took from Saturday to now. It's true. <laughs> like Let's many, whip it. many of you are your fans. Cougar Whip Ramp presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problem. You got to host the Hall of Fame banquet tonight. Take it easy. Uh, will Zach Wilson have more touchdown passes than Taysom Hill has touches this weekend? Ooh, probably not. I think Taysom Hill will have at least four touches of the football. Mm hmm. So I don't think Zach's going to throw four touchdown passes. Against I'd be Broncos. happy if Zach Wilson yeah. throws, you know, more touchdown passes and interceptions on the road against Denver. Yes. Uh, Hill has seven touches this year. Wilson has two touchdowns. So it's uh, plus five for Taysom right now. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go Hill touches more than yep. Wilson touchdowns yep. right now. Yep. Okay. Which Williams in the NFL will have more total yards in the Baltimore Ravens-Detroit Lions game? Tyson has 142 all rushing, and then Jamal Williams has 147 combined rushing receiving. Okay. Tyson. I think Tyson's going to be the guy. Yeah. Just for fun, I'm just going to go with Jamal. Okay. I messaged Jamal this week. We had an interaction. He's got a good mojo going, so I'm going to go with Jamal. Love it. Love it. Who do you want to win tomorrow morning? Because it's a 10 a.m. game. 10 a.m. in Logan. Utah State and Boise State. 10 a.m. in Logan. Oh, I'm going back that, and forth. Is, the, on is the milk even um, milked at that uh, point? Is it, is it even Like, are the chores even done? Is it pasteurized at 10 a.m.? What? Is it homogenized oh, boy, at, yeah. at 10 a.m.? Um, I, I kind of want Boise State to win this game. Uh, just so that they potentially have a winning record when they come to Provo. Like, I don't want Boise State to have a losing record when they come to Provo and that game to lose some luster. However, if Utah State's 4-0, and that would set up an epic Friday night showdown in Logan. I still <laughs> yes, lean, it would. I'm still leaning towards Boise State. Though. I don't know who I want still. It's tough. I have, it's I have tough. no idea who I want. I have no clue. No clue. Can both lose? <laughs> that cannot happen. <laughs> cannot happen. Finishing the tie. All right. Yesterday, Alex Barcelo and Richard Harwood were arguing yep. the argument of arguments when it comes to pro basketball. Yes. Okay. Who's the GOAT, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Who made the better argument in that debate? Listen to this. LeBron took the worst team in the NBA. Immediately when he went there, they went to the finals, okay? He was the only difference. Like, the fact that he could take the worst team and make it the best is, like, game changer, bro. Michael Jordan, 11-0. and 0. NCAA, FIBA, Olympics, NBA Finals. Never lost in a championship game. Team Jordan. Okay, right. I, I'm obviously Team Jordan, last name, um, and grew up watching Jordan. Can we see a Richard Harward again, just one more time, just a still image? He looks like he could be one of the three musketeers. Like, if he grew kind of a bigger mustache and, like, a little longer uh -huh. hair and uh -huh. had, like, a, 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 you know, a sword, I really think he could. Okay, maybe this is a future <laughs> meme that we need to make of BYU basketball players. Caleb Loder looks like he could be a three musketeer. Totes. Right? Yes. So we need to find somebody else that yeah. fits that... Trio. Part of the big three. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go. Uh, yeah, it's Team Jordan, and this is, has everything to do with when we grew up, how we grew up. I still like LeBron as a basketball player. I don't like his antics, but I love LeBron the best. Well, the other thing that Alex didn't mention is Michael Jordan was the NBA Defensive Player of the Year multiple times. Like, the most complete yeah. player I've ever seen. Yeah. Team Jordan. He's amazing. Baby. What's your reaction after seeing Atiki Ali Atiki touch the top rung on the vertical jump Machine. Uh, yeah, uh, can they get a higher Look at vertical this. machine? Look at this. Okay, the top of that is 12 feet, by the way. Uh, did, can it go higher than 12 feet? That was my first thought. Okay, how high can he jump? 
if he's touching the top of that, how high can they get it to go? Can he? Can, so rumor has it, Tiki Ali Tiki's like David Thompson. He'll 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 jump, carry a dollar up to the top of the backboard, and then leave four quarters. I love it. Yeah, I, I'm just the messenger. Yeah, huh? no, seriously. My first thought was, okay, can it go any higher? That's wild. Can you take me higher, Creed? <sighs> There's your Creed. One reference. of the best. It's not a Friday show. It's one of the best. Without a Creed reference. Bands of all time said no one. Yeah, very impressive. <laughs> He's just, his length is incredible. Wow. Yeah, incredible. cannot wait to see him play. How tall is he? 6'10? 6'11? 11. 6'10, 11. Yeah. We'll find out Tuesday. We'll see him in action. <sighs> all right. Coming up, prop picks for USF. And BYU Hall of Fame inductee and All American golfer at BYU, Carrie Summer Hayes Roberts. Yep, she's a Summer Hayes. You know, she's, she's got game. This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on me. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Bring your brooms because uh, BYU women's volleyball, 10 of 12 matches this year in three. 11th ranked BYU taking on St. Mary's tomorrow, 3 Eastern on the BYU TV, on BYU TV and the app. Rob Browning back in the house, former Cougar player in the club days and uh, assistant coach early in the night. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We're live in Studio B and it is our pleasure to welcome in BYU women's golf coach, former All-American at BYU, one of the fiercest competitors we know, and soon to be BYU Athletics Hall of Famer, Carrie Summerhays Roberts. Carrie, welcome oh. to Studio B again. Thank you. It's good to be back. It's been a while. I know. It has, what, like two years? Yeah, Since at you've least. Been in the studio? Yeah. Hey, all you had to do was win a couple of tournaments. <laughs> all season, we were like, we need the Hall of Fame. We need you to be in the Hall of Fame to come back. Easy, I know. It's like, wow. Okay. The standards really high to get yes. in. Yes. When and how did you find out that you were going to be inducted into the BYU Athletics Hall of Fame? So the day after I got back for the U.S. Women's Amateur, caddying for one of my players, they called me. I was literally at the pool with my kids, and luckily I answered the phone. And um, he called and said, "Hey, we'd like to, you know, put you in the Hall of Fame." And then he's like, "Will you accept that?" I was like, what do you mean? I have to accept that? Like, <laughs> this is a choice? Yeah, this is a no-brainer. So anyways, they told me about it. Super cool. I was just, like, blown away. It was cool. My parents were there. So it was kind of a cool moment. That's awesome. Uh, how good of a caddy are you, by the way? Oh, I think I'm awesome. But <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's my players. I don't know. I never mistreat a pot. I never miss. I mean, that's incredible how good I am. <laughs> that's I love fantastic. the confidence. Yeah. <laughs> were, were you a better uh, player than caddy? Uh, sure. Okay. Okay. Well, let's rewind. Okay. To your amazing BYU career. 
Do you have a favorite moment or accomplishment as a player? Because we know what you're doing as a coach. Yeah. You're probably going to be inducted as a coach a little bit later, too. Wait, can we do two? You're technically going in as a player. Let's hope. What's your favorite moment as a player at BYU? Yeah, as a player, geez. You know, there's a lot of good moments, good memories. On the course, it had to be nationals um, up up in Oregon and um, crazy hard golf course, super cold and Honestly, I hit one of the best flop shots there that literally I still remember, you know. And just honestly, just there's some cool, super cool memories with my teammates that you just never. I mean, our, our coach took us everywhere, allowed us to do everything, and it was like the coolest thing in the world to me. Growing up as a summer hit, it's like golf is a thing that you guys do, right? So yeah. when, when did you really embrace golf as like, yes, I'm going to embrace the family you know, uh, business? Honestly, it was very young. I literally loved it from little, little, little. I mean, I was five years old begging my mother to put me in a tournament. And of course she was like, you are too young, too young. And I remember just begging and begging and begging. Literally five years old, I played in my first tournament. I just always loved it. You probably won it too, huh? (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, okay. The the trophy's in there somewhere. Somewhere. Okay, as as far as this Hall of Fame class goes, I mean, you're joining Jimmer for Dead and Brian Banks and, and Gay Mayor. I mean, this is an incredible class. Yeah. What does it mean to you to be a part of this specific class? You know, to be to go in with Jimmer, how cool is that? I mean, come on. I mean, he's the greatest of all time. To me, that honestly just makes it super cool. I ran into Dave Rose at the golf course, and he goes, man, how cool that you're going in with Jimmer. And I was like, yeah, you know. Like, Jimmer's going in with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> Let's rephrase that. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's what my my kids, my my ten year old was like. So I can meet Jimmer. Like that was the first thing he said. Not like, hey, that's cool, mom. Congratulations. But wait, what's in it for me? Wait, I can meet Jimmer. So <laughs> super super cool. No, that's awesome. And every year when this when this comes up, it's like, yes, the legacy of BYU athletics is so rich in all the sports. Yeah, it's crazy. I know I know certain sports get more love than others, but right. in terms of golf and kind of the history there, what does it mean to be in the Hall of Fame? as a golfer and be the golf coach as you continue to grow yeah, your program. Yeah, honestly, it's super, super cool. Like, I, I didn't think it would be that big a deal, honestly. And and then as I got thinking, I was like, wow, this is kind of cool, you know, to, to be coaching and, and I don't know, maybe it gives me a little more clout with people. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it raises the status. <laughs> maybe. Awesome. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It's super cool. It's super cool. Let's talk about your team. Yeah, uh, killing it. I mean, on fire. Two for two right now. Yeah. What's the deal? Do Big we need wins, to give you man. all the credit? Is it You're good coach. coaching? Zero. Yeah. No, what, no, no, what is no. it? 100% the players. I mean, you know what happened last April at a conference, you know, a horrible loss. And the way they responded to that, the way the captains stood up and said, you know, we, we basically set our our fall goals or whatever, this season's goals right then and there. And the captain mm-hmm. stood up and just said, this is what we're working for in the summer. You know, and they went out and killed the summer, killed it now. It's a fiercely determined team. Yeah, Kirsten Fotu and Leela Nalia have been amazing, among others, Alicia May Mateo. We've had several of them on the show. Yeah. They've been great. What, what, it, what is it about this group that is making them so self-motivated, so, uh, I guess, coachable? <laughs> the, the pain of defeat. You know, mm. honestly, it, it was painful. I mean, and I remember, you know, we were leading with, what, four or five holes left. And, and, and you know, it was people who don't play sports. They don't get how hard that is. And we woke up the next day, and I was like, wow, the pain is real. Like, mm. it, it hurt, you know, and it hurt everybody. And, and that was kind of a turning point, I think, okay. for us. It said, we, we don't want that anymore. Like, we should have had that. That was ours. Let's... Let's do something about it. I'm glad you brought that up because we were talking about a turning point for BYU football a couple yeah. of years ago. They lost in Tampa at yeah. USF, the team they're going to play on Saturday. Yeah. That team finished 4-8. and eight. Uh, It was devastating loss for Fired BYU. the coach, yeah. Okay, BYU was 19-3 and three since that yeah. point. They won five games in a row after that. Yeah. What is it about that mental dynamic when you go through something hard like that? It, it's crazy. It hurts too. It's like touching a stove. You'll never do that again, right? It hurts too bad. And and really, we just we really had a rough season that wasn't us. Like, honestly, I and people thought I was so weird. I was just like, no, no, no. We're amazing. We just don't realize it yet. Like, we, we actually did some pretty cool things last year, just like maybe once or twice instead of all the time. And there's just something about it that just you're like, this is not what I want. This is not how I want to feel. Like, and then just the belief that you can do something about it and change it, that, that's what makes this team special. That's exciting. Uh, what's up next for your team? So we actually go to the Golf Week in Vail Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That We have three in a row and then take a break, Tulsa, and then the fall season ends and we get ready for, for spring. Do you love travel? 
to these exotic golf locations. Yeah, I actually do. I love it. I mean, it's some pretty cool places that we get to see. Yeah. Great golf courses. And honestly, traveling with this group literally is the funnest thing ever. Mm. They're fun. They're always laughing, Why? cracking jokes. They're f they're chill. Because they're chill? Yeah, they're yeah. chill. I mean, literally, I mean, on our way home, we missed our flight, had to get a different flight. Then we flew through Denver. It was de we were delayed in Denver. We land. It's midnight. Cars aren't starting. And we're just rolling. We're laughing. Instead <laughs> of people getting upset and whatever, we're just like, just making, having fun with it. That's and awesome. so it, it's a chill chill group and you know they like to eat good food so that's oh that, that's important yeah yeah that's important sounds like we need to go on one of these it's you need to come. Yeah. What do we it's an experience awesome. what do we need to do to get on the travel party with women's golf <laughs> you know what let's bring sports nation right to women's golf yes like the tournament championship who doesn't want to watch like live golf nationals. let's go we're expanding hey, we'll I'm tell getting... our bosses fyi this is happening, happening. <laughs> golf closer don't ask three years just say it's screens. happening yeah I know all about golf coverage. This I've heard of golf. Good. This is very exciting. Be loud. Yeah, be proud. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Kerry. Congratulations. Thank on you the very much. Judge. It's so awesome. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, coming up, which of our game analysts got a watch from Steve Young back in the day but didn't keep it? Plus, our prop picks for USF at BYU. And did you ever spin the wheel of consequence, Jerem? I, I don't, don't know think, what you're talking about. I don't think you did. What? This is BYU Sports Nation. I couldn't hear you. Speak up. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with the free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio app. Or download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast or, and subscribe right in. It's very simple. It's also very simple to spin the wheel of consequence, Jerem, which you've not done after your loss last week. I'm willing to do it. And I'm just kidding. Did, is, are we, are we, Let's make it two spins of the wheel this weekend, shall we? It's worth two spins? Ooh, I don't know. Or we both, like, if Double you or nothing. lose... Double or nothing. I bet I can get you to bet. Double or nothing. <laughs> All right, let's get to our prop picks. USF at BYU. Okay, Jerem, number one. Ryan Rico's punt average yes. will be what? Closest to the pin. 49. I say 47. Oh, no, you don't believe in him. I, no, 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 no. This is a <laughs> field kidding. position. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's at the 47, downs it at the one. 46 <laughs> yards. Okay. All right. <laughs> How many false start? Oh. Penalties will USF have? Listen, the crowd's going to be amazing. It's not going to be like last week, though. It's just not. Um, one. They'll just have a bunch of other penalties, right? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I say two. Okay. And again, uh, thir 13th fewest penalties in the country for USF. They're not penalized. Wow. So All I only right. say one okay. false start. Yeah. They're playing 
10 p.m. Eastern time on the road. Provost. Literally, eyes are closing. Brand Whoa. new quarterback. I got you. Okay, final one. BYU will win by how many points? Uh, 24. Oh, you, so that you think they cover? Yeah. I said 21. I, I think they barely cover. 21 for me. Yeah. All right, here you go. Again, you just don't believe in them. As much. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's a joke. Well, listen. Joke. We've switched roles, okay? When, you put when, on the blue goggles, and I'm I the love roles. They're one delicious. Um, when when someone so, like I don't actually like predicting the score of the game very much, uh, and so people ask me in public and the other day, I, they said, "Hey, Arizona State," and I go fifty to nothing. Ooh, someone else said that close to the program, jokingly as well. It's like Whoa. that's what I said. Okay, so I thought about it, and I'm like, uh, BYU's defense. Not for South Florida. It was a joke for life. BYU's defense has given up like 16 points a game. So I was like. I could see this being like a 38-17 game. Do you think, point do we think that South Florida will score more points than Utah and Arizona State well, against BYU? Well, do Arizona, we think USF will get in the 20s? No. Garbage time, maybe? Arizona scored 16. Right. But it was a game the whole time. Like, right. So the starters are in the whole time for BYU? I, yeah. don't, I don't think you I expect BYU to win handily. It's just by how much. Yeah. All right. Our question of the day. What is a satisfactory... Margin of victory over USF, in your opinion. Let's go to Voice of the Nation. Bruce F. Webster on Twitter answers four scores, so 24 points like Jerem. There you go. Or 27 if you assume USF could go for two and make it each time. (laughs) Uh, What? (laughs) Okay. Uh, How about our elite Voice of the Day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from Mark Lyman on Facebook? I think it's a matter of what the game feels like. First win. Second, be up by two scores at halftime. Third, don't let them back in the game during the second half when your second and third stringers are in play. And in the end, win by 17 plus. 17 plus, yeah. At Michael J. Burns as well. 50 points. There you go. Meaning, yeah, win by 50. No, USF's too talented. Win by 50. I'm hoping BYU wins by three scores. I'd take a a two score win and be okay with that. I wouldn't be happy with it. 17 plus. Okay with it. Vegas is telling us this should be a blowout. NBA is ranked 15th, and USF yes. has struggled. Just yeah. go 17 plus. Yes. Like if this is a 34 17 game, great. I'd take it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. The BYU Hall of Fame class, which Absolutely. you will help induct uh, I'm seeing tonight. Hopefully Elise my Stoll. Voice is a little stronger. Yeah, take it easy. Eight uh, kills last night. And then uh, Amy Gant told a story on the volleyball broadcast last night where Steve Young gave her a watch. Uh, it. When he was training here in the offseason, I said, well, do you still have the watch? She said, no. I was like, what? Where's the watch? How do you not have the watch, Amy? What the heck, man? But Steve Young, nice guy. She literally said, nice watch, and he just took it out and gave it to her? Yes, just gave it to her. Crazy, right? Steve's the best. Steve's so nice. Our thanks to today's guests, Joey Johnson and Kerry Roberts. Sorry to Dennis Pitt. I ran out of time. Poor Jerem. I am Spencer. Shout out to Daniel Summerhays. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow for volleyball at 3 Eastern and then countdown to kickoff. Go Cougs.